Story of Seasons, previously known as Harvest Moon prior to the marvellous Natsume split where the latter continues to make games under the Harvest Moon name since they hold the rights to it, is a series I'll always make time for. A relaxed farming simulation game where you grow crops, raise animals and become friends with the local townsfolk is a nice change of pace to some of the other games I play, and Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town is no different. With a new setting and a new set of faces, it was also good going into one of these games and discovering everything for the first time, instead of relying on previous knowledge like I did with Friends of Mineral Town. For transparency, a copy of this game was provided to me courtesy of a PR network, and I'll be discussing content which happens late into the game, so if minor spoilers aren't your thing, just before I get on to the good, feel free to skip to the opinion which is where I summarise the good and the bad stuff, as well as give out the traditional nonsensical rating. Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town begins with your character inheriting their grandfather's old worn down farm. You can choose the look for your character and there are no restrictions on what clothes and game they can wear. As your aspiring farmer pulls up to Olive Town, their scooter breaks down and they're approached by Victor, the mayor of the town who is a friend of your grandfather as well as one of the town's founders, and your farm life begins. As you work on the farm, you'll grow crops, take care of animals, and gather materials all to restore the farm to its previous glory. You can even go and make friends with the townsfolk with some of them being available to romance before ultimately marrying and starting a family with them. Bachelors and bachelorettes can be wooed by your player character regardless of your appearance at the start of the game, so you have that extra freedom of choice. While you're doing all this, you can also help transform the town from a sleepy small town to a bustling tourist trap. It's a lot to do and it's a lot to take in, but is it any good? Find out in... The Good. I do appreciate how busy this game has kept me. Traditionally in a Harvest Moon Story of Seasons game when you start off and are limited to what you can do, days can go anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. The average day in this game has been 20 to 30 minutes for me consistently. This is also despite setting up sprinklers to automate the watering process, cutting a lot of time out of my day as crop maintenance, especially watering them when you start getting lots of crops, will eat away at it. Certain activities now take in-game time, so if you want to get into cooking, each meal you prepare takes 30 minutes of the day, and main dishes, entrees as they're known in the game, will fill your character up so you won't be able to eat again for a few hours. Fishing has also become a mini-game, so you now have to work for that fish as well. The seasons in the game have been cut back from the traditional 31 days down to 28, and each season has two festivals, one that you can spend time with a character that you're dating, and one which features a mini-game. Whether it was running around mining, growing lots of crops, making materials, fulfilling requests, or talking to townsfolk, I felt like there was always something to do in the game, and I found often my in-game days finishing after 11pm, which would make my next day start at 8am instead of the usual 6. Being kept busy was quite good compared to other games where I would have everything done by mid-morning and was breezing through the seasons. I never felt a sense of urgency to get things done, and being able to do things at a relaxed pace is always nice. The variety of animals available in the game was quite welcome. You have two breeds of chicken, sheep, goats, alpacas and rabbits, and from the time I spent with the game, either two breeds of cows and buffalo, or three bovine breeds all up. Animals don't need to be initially purchased, as they're found wild wandering around until you repair the appropriate barn or coop for them. New animals wander about each season, so you'll tend to come across a new wild animal to tame each season for the first year or so. You'll probably need to upgrade the barn or build enough to fit all of them though. There are also other wild animals wandering around that you can take photos of. These photos can be donated to the museum where you can purchase replica sculptures to decorate your house. The camera can also be used to take photos of things happening around your farm and Olive Town and who knows, you might have one of your photos featured as a loading screen image for someone else's game with its online features. There are a variety of pets available with others being unlocked through the shrine once requirements are met and was nice being able to choose one. Animal produce quality is locked to generation so the game does promote breeding animals to get better produce, and I found raising friendship to be pretty easy to do in the game, so it wasn't an issue. You can release an animal to the nature spirits if you need to make more space, though the extra income from keeping them is a plus. Inventory management was something I liked with this game. You do start off with a small rucksack, which can be upgraded to carry a lot more, but the things I did like was that tools that you rarely use could be put away into its own pocket so that you can free up space in your rucksack, though it needs to be in the rucksack to be used. And a lot of the tools required to get produce from animals, such as the milker, brush and clippers, aren't counted as items in your rucksack, so you don't need to worry about buying them or having them on you when you interact with your animals, as they'll be used automatically. The game also introduces a bucket as a tool for you to scoop out puddles for clay to make mortars and bricks, as well as small ponds for treasures you can donate to the museum. 
While having a constantly full rucksack is still something to deal with, you can also build multiple chests that can be stored outside to dump all your extra stuff into. Since you can place things just about anywhere on the land, where you keep things and how you organise things is all entirely up to you. But with all things good in this game, there are some that aren't so good, so let's explore those in... The Bad. I wasn't a big fan of the material makers. In order to repair or upgrade things in the game, you need to be able to process materials, and depending on the material, the amount of time required to process it can vary. Of course, having one maker doing all the work when you get to a point where you need 4-10 to 10 hours to process, or in the case of seeds and gems, 23 hours, it would make more sense to have more makers processing multiple things, right? It would make even more sense having one big maker process them in bulk too, right? While you can get larger makers, they just require you to max out certain skills to get one, and are cumbersome to make more of. So in the meantime, you might find your farm full of makers processing stuff, making it look more like a casino than a farm. It looks messy, you can't put these things inside, but it helps pad out the day. There are several makers that process things that you've already processed, which adds to the time it makes to get things. This is why I never really bothered with getting extra clothes in the game until late game when I could be bothered making the threads to convert into cloth, as well as wool and fur into yarn, and then to cloth. Being able to just outright buy the cloth straight from the general store like you would for produce for dishes, or flowers for bouquets from the flower shop would have made things a lot quicker, and easier. I also felt that character interactions were a lot weaker than they were in previous games. While they do get the point across with you getting to know the townsfolk a little better, once you start dating your love interest and you can pick multiple people to date, the events required for you to propose to one of them, you can only get married to one of course, felt more like cutscenes or random events than a character getting closer to you. Some characters do have more meaningful events, and others I can at least acknowledge and appreciate that it does show character growth, but they just don't seem to have the magic that other entries in the series have retained. Characters do lack portraits when speaking with them, and I felt the expressions were a little more limited, so maybe that could have contributed towards it. I also found that there were no such thing as a hated item. The least you can get from anyone in the game is a neutral response, which still raises the friendship gauge anyway. So you could just give everyone in town grass, or a brick, or even garbage, and they'd still accept it and like you more for it. It sort of takes away a part of that unique personality from them. I will also admit that I did enjoy some of the events as they were a treat to unlock as I went around getting to know everyone. Even though there isn't really a time limit, and you're able to do things at your own pace, I found that the game was a bit on the easy side and there wasn't too much of a story to it. I wasn't in much of a rush, and I found myself completing the main objective of the game by winter of the first year. Despite meeting that final objective, I never really noticed the town being much busier, and a lot of the tourists that visit are actually other players from other farms, as I've been able to recognise a familiar face among them. The multiplayer stuff is pretty limited, and I felt it could have been expanded on so you could visit other people's farms, or even trade crops and materials with them to help each other out. While I did find some of the other photos players put up on my loading screens funny and creative, you'll also get some pretty immature ones like the ones people have been posting up of a fox's ass. The game does have a season pass which will expand on the story as well as offer DLC outfits and more bachelors and bachelorettes, hailing from previous Story of Seasons games and, by extension, Harvest Moon A New Beginning to Woo, so I'm a bit optimistic about this. Other than that, there isn't too much more I need to cover here, so let's wrap things up with... The Opinion. On the surface, Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town certainly scratches the itch I have for the genre and initially exceeded the expectations I had for it. The game kept me busy constantly, there was a good variety of things, and it tackled inventory management pretty well. But under the surface, the cracks really start to show with the casino looking makers populating the farm, weaker character interactions, and story which takes more of a backseat and lacklustre multiplayer features. The makers and the fishing minigames take some inspiration from Stardew Valley, which itself was inspired by the Harvest Moon Story of Seasons series, so we've come full circle here. Nonetheless, Pioneers of Olive Town is a good entry in a well-established and long-running series of farming simulation games, and if you're into that relaxed, slice-of-life experience, and you've played Harvest Moon, Story of Seasons, Stardew Valley, and other similar farming simulators, then you'll be right at home here. Looking at it though, the game isn't the best game in the series, but it is by no means the worst. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town... A turnip out of 10. Not a giant turnip, not a special turnip, just a turnip. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. 
You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.